Hi guys, my name is Yuri Znaviak. Hi, I'm Nestor Oprisk. And today we'd like to present you our MemSQL Backup Restore command line tool. Okay, let's start by describing our cluster setup. We have brought up three host, three node cluster. There is one master, one aggregator, and one leaf. We have also created a test database called TestDB. This test database consists of a single table T1, and this table has two columns, one integral column A and textual column B. Nothing fancy, but that's more than enough for our demo. Let's start to use backing up to Amazon S3. So first of all, we'd like to point out that we already have Amazon credentials set up. To create backup, you can use create backup command. The repository consists of a schema. S3 is the schema for Amazon S3. Then goes the bucket. So far, you have to specify the region, but in next versions, we will be able to automatically reduce it. Finally, you have to specify databases you would like to back up. You can specify more than one, but like we have only one. Okay, so the next thing we will check is that the backup is actually created on the AWS. And you can see all files are there. As you can see, all metadata is stored. The start time, the end time, and we can say that it actually took us one second to back up our enormous database. Now we can take a look at the list backups command. To list backups, you also need to specify the repository in the same format. Let's make one more backup to make something more interesting to list. Okay. As you can see, list backups has returned us only one single backup. The reason is that by default, we actually show only the latest backup. To see all backups, you would have to specify dash dash all flag. And we can actually check the S3 bucket to make sure that we indeed have two physical backups. Yep. To understand it better, there is also a summarize backups command. As you can see, in this repository, we have two backups for the test B database. Oldest one being this one. Okay, so now the most important part, restoring the backup. In this demo, we will use short version of dash dash repository flag, dash r. Again, the repository is the schema, the bucket, and then the region. And the backup name is a whole string. As you can see, we cannot restore the database immediately because the database already exists. So we have a couple of options now. We can either drop the database, which is scary, or we can use dash dash database prefix or dash dash database suffix flags. For this demo, we will use dash dash database prefix. Okay, as you can see, our database was actually successfully restored. Let's check the database. You can see that we have brief test DB database. Okay, let's see its content. Yep, still have one table. And it contains exactly the same stuff as our original table. Okay. Let's list our backups once again. Now we have two backups, an older one and a newer one. To demonstrate backup delete, we will try to delete an older backup. And that's it, backup is deleted. If you list all backups using list backups command, you will see only the newest one. And if you check S3, you will see only newer backup. Okay. Before I forgot, we can also validate backups. And you can see that backup is valid. No surprises here. Backup not only to S3, but also to network file storage. We will call it NFS for short, or Microsoft Azure. Let's start with NFS. It's really similar to S3. The only difference is that we use file schema instead of S3. So let's create a backup.
and that's it. Now we have a backup and let's create one more. Let's list all backups. And as usual, we can see the only the latest backup. But with dash dash all flag, you can see all backups. We can also validate the newest backup. And since the newest backup is valid, we can safely delete the old one. OK, now list backups with dash dash all shows only the remaining backup. Physically, everything is located in the NFS directory that was given by the repository flag. There is one caveat, though. To read backups, you have to be exactly the same user as an MSQL B. Let me demonstrate this. As you can see, those files are unreadable by anybody but an MSQL user. And we get permission tonight. Let's try something more interesting, a sudo command. As you can see, we can't read it even with sudo. You can read it as an MSQL user. Creating backups to Azure is pretty much the same as NFS, but you have to specify Azure scheme instead of file or S3. We will use demo containers that we have just created. As always, you can use list backups. As always, you can restore backup. As always, you can see it actually stored. As always, you can validate backup. And most interesting part is actually looking to see what's inside the container. To make sure Azure works, you will have to have Azure Storage Key and Azure Storage Account environment variables. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Thank you for your attention.